Today we're going to talk about what your pastor wants you to know about those podcasts that you listen to. Yes, even this one. This is The Bible Sojourner, where we discuss issues related to the Bible, theology, and culture. I'm your host, Peter Gaiman, professor of Old Testament and Biblical Languages at Shepherd's Theological Seminary. Shalom and welcome. Thanks for joining. Welcome back to The Bible Sojourner. I'm so glad that you're joining us. One of the privileges that I have and what I do is I teach at Shepherd's Theological Seminary, and I also get to host this podcast and the YouTube channel, and I get to interact with Christians from all around the world. It's a true privilege and honor, and I praise the Lord for that. It's so fulfilling in many ways. And I have many friends that I graduated with in seminary, friends that I've met after I graduated, who toil and labor in pastoral ministry, and I just love them to death. They do amazing work. I'm so thankful for them. And today I want to do something that I've seen even in my own pastoral ministry, as well as what I've talked with some of my friends about and what I've seen in their ministries, I've observed them. And that's really talk about the ramifications of people who listen to podcasts and who watch YouTube videos. And it's obviously a little bit ironic because you're listening to this on a podcast or you're watching the YouTube video on this, right? And it's kind of interesting because as we think about what a podcast is supposed to be or what a YouTube channel is supposed to be, um, in my mind, those mediums are often linked just because of the different ways that people consume information. When you think about what they're supposed to be, a lot of times there's maybe a lack of understanding. And one of the things I want to try to do today is even kind of point out how a lot of people hurt themselves because they don't really understand the role that podcasts and YouTube channels and whatever. Uh, you could even put in books there. We'll talk about the connection between books and podcasts uh, in during our episode today. But I just want to talk in in a conversational manner about what is what is it that we're doing. And really, I want to do it in in a kind of a provocative way in one sense. I want to kind of mimic what it might be if your pastor sat down and and had the conversation with you about podcasts. And I want to do it this way partly because I think there are a lot of pastors out there that wish they could have these conversations with some of the people in their congregation, but they aren't for a variety, they aren't able to have these conversations for a variety of reasons, some of which we'll talk about. But I think it's just really helpful. And you might not agree with everything on the list, but I think it should be at least a really good way to have conversations. And maybe now you can have a conversation with your pastor about these things if you haven't already, because these are really important conversations to have. So I have basically eight things that if I was interviewing a pastor on different podcasts, these are eight things that they would really want you to know. All right, number one, podcasts are an amazing resource for growth and learning. Okay, they're amazing. Uh, it really is mind-boggling just what we're able to learn and to do and to experience now in today's technological world. You know, I was, uh, I've, I've talked with people who say, you know, I'm not much of a reader. I can't really read. And, and I introduce them to podcasts and I say, well, hey, it doesn't matter if you, if you can't read. You should read. Everyone should learn to get better at reading. That's so important. But it's it's really important to be consuming information, to be learning and growing anyway. So listen to these podcasts and grow. And then they come back and they say, wow, this is so awesome. Do you have any more? And it's just really cool. And so in one sense, this is something really because of the smartphone and all that, we just have a technological revolution. Podcast listening is exploding among you know the world populace. YouTube is is exploding with regard to where people go to find out answers to information. And so something would be wrong if somebody was only getting input in their life on Sunday morning from the preaching of God's word. We, we want to encourage people to get information from other sources. And so from that perspective, I think most pastors are really excited about the opportunity that they can, they can see growth in their church members because of podcasts. And I think pastors are, are just absolutely thrilled about that. So that's the just out of the gate, I think a really easy thing that everyone can be excited about. But number two, on the heels of number one, is that not all podcasts are the same. 
And just because someone has a podcast doesn't mean necessarily that they should have a podcast, if that makes sense. The, the greatest advantage of the internet and podcasting is also its disadvantage is that there's not really any gatekeeper. You can have, you know, some random guy who has no spiritual qualifications filming or recording in his mother's basement, and he can have a massive following, okay? That was always the danger of blogging as well. Now, again, I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, but as Christians, we just need to be wise and discerning and thinking through this, is that you really need to be careful. Now, this is one area where podcasting and blogging and all these different venues that the internet has made available is actually different from books. Because traditionally, oh, this is slightly changing now too, but traditionally, books have always had editors and publishing houses that control the flow of information. And so in order to get past or into, into the conversation, you actually had to have a, a way in. So you actually had to have uh, a way past the gatekeepers. You needed to be able to actually pass that muster or, or pass their test. And so that, that was actually a big part of the publishing industry is your, your resources actually had to be good enough to make it into the publishing world. But for the podcasting world, the YouTube world, you literally can have people just on their iPhone or on their smartphone and just recording videos and putting them and they can get millions of views. And that's kind of scary. Uh, so it's one of those things where just because somebody has millions of followers even doesn't mean that they should. Okay. And so, uh, and on that note too, one of the things that's really important to understand is that just because a show is well produced doesn't necessarily mean that the content is good. So the quality of production isn't necessarily related to the quality of content. And I think that's really important. And we see that all the time. I think maybe the line that I think could be applicable here that was shared a long time ago in, in the venue of wisdom by our elders was that a pig with a lipstick is still a pig. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not naming names and saying which podcasts I think are pig-like, but I will say that it is important to understand that just because something is well-produced uh, doesn't really mean that it's, the content is very high. So we do need to be discerning. That's, that's really the, the, is the issue. And I think I could speak for almost all pastors when I say that this is where it's very similar to books, where just because a book is there or a book has been published and you have the opportunity to read it doesn't mean that everything in it is going to be good. And so, so too, if you're watching YouTube, if you're listening to podcasts, it really does require discernment. Uh, it's, it's not enough just to hear something and say, oh, this guy's a pastor or this guy teaches at a seminary. Or this guy, you know, has written all these books. Therefore, uh, I should believe what he says on something. Discernment is so vital, and it just, you know, let's let's be honest. I work with young adults a lot in in our church, and one of the things that it just really hurts me hurts me in in the gizzard is that uh, I just see a, a very vital lack of discernment a lot of times. I know it extends beyond the church. I just I just work or beyond young adults, but I just work with young adults. So it's always prevalent there in, in my space. And, and a lot of times people will, will just hit, hit the jettison button on, on discernment and they'll just take what people say and embrace it. And we cannot do that. We cannot do that. We need to be like the noble Bereans and reject a lot of what we hear. In fact, uh, let me just use this opportunity to tell you again that um, I would be kind of offended, honestly, if you believed everything I said on this podcast. Now, I believe everything I say on this podcast, at least when I say it, but uh, my goal is not to make carbon copies of me. Uh, my goal is just to try to have conversations, help us sharpen. And I've been sharpened even by some of the feedback I've gotten on different episodes. And so thank you so much for that. But I just, I'm not, I'm not in this to just make people, you know, carbon copies. And I don't think anybody should. Uh, we, we need to know that discernment is very crucial. And so what I think a pastor really wants to tell, you know, the congregation that he's pastoring is that uh, podcasts are great, but not all podcasts are equal, just like not all books are equal. We, we wouldn't say, for example, that, oh yeah, the Joel Osteen uh, book is, you know, the equivalent with, you know, John Piper, John MacArthur, or whatever. You know, it's, no, we know that there's a qualitative difference. 
even though everything is going to be highly well produced in in those camps that Osteen and others populate because of the money that comes in. But not all podcasts are the same, and we need to understand that from a foundational level. Okay, number three, your pastor would also like to know what you're listening to. I, uh, I think this is so crucial. Uh, it, it's very similar to reading books. You know, pastors love you. They, they care for your soul. They really want to benefit you. And so I would just say on an application level, uh, people should tell their pastors, their church leaders, those who are watching their souls, uh, what they're listening to, what they're reading, what, what they're spending their time with. Uh, I think that that's, that's crucial. I think that this uh, pastors really want to know, okay, what's important to, to you? What, what are you learning? What are you looking at? That helps them stay engaged with you. That helps them uh, pay attention and also know uh, kind of maybe what, how they can help you better. Uh, it's, it's very similar to books. In the past, you know, pastors would always want to know, oh, what are you reading? Like, what, what, are, what are you having input right now? How are these things working? And so I think that this is really crucial. A lot of times, uh, you know, people just don't think about mentioning those things. And I think it, it ought to be part of our just conversations is saying, hey, I'm listening to this guy. Have you heard something about him? I love when people ask me that. Uh, people will, will say, hey, what do you think of this guy? Um, I, I've been listening to some of this guy. What do you think of him? And I'll say, well, hey, he's really good on these issues, but I have some major problems with what he talks about with regard to this issue. And, you know, I'll give him, I'll give him uh, it, what I hope is a fair, a fair shake. But I think it's really, really important to understand that, you know, pastors aren't omniscient. And so a lot of times they get caught off guard. If, if all of a sudden you start talking about something or you had a shift in your thinking and they don't know where it came from. And then all of a sudden it comes out, ah, he's been listening to so-and-so. This all makes sense now. Well, if they would have known that a little earlier, maybe they could have helped and there could have been a conflict avoidance uh, in, in saying, because let's just be honest, pastors, most pastors are, are pretty sharp guys. They, they've been around the block a little bit. They've seen different things and they know, oh, when somebody listens to this podcast, they become this kind of person. That's just what happens nowadays. Uh, or when somebody starts following this individual, then they become this kind of person. And so it helps to have those conversations open. Uh, and I think that that's, that's really beneficial. So your pastor wants to know what you're listening to uh, so that he can help you, not so that he can hinder you, but just help guide you. And, you know, you got to trust your pastor with that too, because, you know, the pastor is also not going to be the kind of person that just says, I forbid you from listening to anything except for me. You know, if that's what your pastor does say, it may be time to seriously consider finding a different church. All right, number four, uh, and I think this is really, really important because I, I think we lose sight of this sometimes, but number four, many podcasters are partially motivated by analytics, and so they talk about the hot takes or the cultural issues more than your pastor does, right? So what I mean by this, analytics is basically, if you're unfamiliar with that term, it's it's basically the... Uh, the statistics on your episodes, like your podcast episode. Um, I, I host my podcast, for example, with what used to be known as Anchor, but it's it's basically Spotify's version of a podcast host. And so they actually do a pretty good job of keeping different uh, statistics with regard to who listens and when they listen. And you guys didn't know this, but you're all being tracked by what you listen to and all these things. YouTube does the same thing. And so a lot of times there's analytics that are involved saying, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to analyze who's listening to what and what excites more people. So a lot of times people will say, okay, people want to hear this kind of episode. So I'm going to produce that kind of episode. And then they click on that episode and then they hear that. So, and then it, it uh, raises your podcast or YouTube channel value. Okay. That's typically how most creators, content creators operate. Maybe a little less so in biblically informed circles, but not by much. Honestly, I think there, there is a very heavy dose. In fact, one of the things I remember was with the Asbury, the Asbury revival. Remember that? I mean, we can barely remember it now, but it was just a year ago. And people were, were really excited because there, there was a revival that was happening in the United States. And what's going to happen from that? 
And almost everybody on social media and on the podcasts and on the YouTube videos were were creating all these hot takes on what they thought about the revival, right? I actually had quite a few of you, some of you will remember this, is that some of you reached out to me saying, hey, could you give me some insight on like how to think about this? And that's a good thing. Uh, we do need to we do need to think about things in real time, but the issue is that, you know, the, well, there's a couple of cautions here. On the one hand, we want to be very careful that we don't overly prioritize this idea of hot takes, and you know, the, this idea of oh, we need to we need to immediately respond to every cultural issue that we come across. Uh, it, that that's dangerous. Uh, scripture does not prioritize or even advocate for making fast or quick decisions. Okay. In fact, I was reminded as as I was thinking through this, uh, Proverbs eighteen thirteen. If one gives an answer before he hears, it's folly and a shame. So you think about uh, Proverbs really does elevate the idea of careful thought before responding to something. And so I'm not denying that that there's a need for, you know, helping think through different issues. And so it's not sin by any stretch of the imagination to have a hot take. But the issue is that, um, unfortunately, some, some podcasts, some channels are built on the premise of just always being culturally relevant or, or focused that way. And that's, uh, again, that's not necessarily sinful, but what that does is it, it kind of lessens their value over the long run. And, you don't want to be if you're a listener and you you're, you're buying into that and you're a faithful follower of something like that that's going to make you uh up and down to and fro with the wind of wherever the culture is going you're going to be uh going that way in fact i'll just give a a very brief illustration you know, I, I love al moeller I, I disagree with him on many things i even we had a podcast episode where i <laughs> said i disagreed with him about some important things but uh I love Al Mohler. I think he's such a gift to the church in many ways. Uh, sure, I disagree with him on plenty, but but he's a very bright individual. And one of the things, I used to listen to his briefing all the time, but I noticed that in my own heart, because it was always about the cultural issues and how to respond to that, like I felt I felt that as I was being uh, brought to and fro on, on everything, and I just, my emotions would go up and down and and it was it wasn't good for me um, at that time. I don't I don't know if it was just the season that I was going through or not, but I had to stop listening uh, just because it was it was really uh, damaging to me. And it's not that Al Mohler was sinning and what he was doing or anything like that, but I just realized you know there's there's something going on in my own heart where this isn't beneficial when I'm talking through those issues. So what we're listening to and kind of it can be even a good thing or it can be a non sinful thing, and it can still have a negative influence if you're always attuned to the culture ups, ups and downs, okay? So again, not not saying that it's wrong, but you have to be careful because a lot of podcasters are focused on that and that can do things to how you process things or what you desire to be processed. I think something is wrong if you're always wanting to find out a hot take on a cultural issue instead of you're really desirous of knowing the word of God better. Well, let's put it this way. It's kind of dangerous if you want to know you know, the, the latest and the greatest on the, on the government or the cultural issues, but you're not really that interested in finding out the background of Obadiah or stuff like that, right? Stuff that's really going to matter for the long term of your life. You really want to, you really want to prioritize those things. So yeah, it's good to think through cultural issues and we do need to do that, but just be aware that a lot of times there are ramifications in listening to different channels or or media groups that prioritize their analytics and are really hitting the cultural issues more often than some of the more foundational scriptural issues. So something really important to think through. Uh, number five, podcasters often can afford to stay up to date on the fads and the cultural trends, but pastors can't often. Now, what I mean by this with number five is that I do think pastors should be culturally aware for the big picture items about where culture is going, what's happening. But let's be honest, there is so much happening so fast. And with social media, it's really impossible to stay up on everything. But pastors shouldn't feel the need to do that. But we also can't get upset when they don't. Now, let, let's put it this way. Pastors are the ones who are visiting the sick. They are caring for the dying. I mean, they're holding the hands of the people who are dying in the hospitals, right? That is the call of the shepherd. And you can't get upset with them if they don't 
they don't have, a, you know, an opinion on what Miley Cyrus is doing or whatever, you know. Um, if you don't know who Miley Cyrus is, good on you. But, you know, it's one of those things where we understand that, okay, the pastor does have a lot going on. And a lot of times the the podcaster isn't, well, some, some are functioning as pastors, but but some don't. Some are are incapable or perhaps they don't have the opportunity to function as shepherds, but you know, they're on YouTube or they're doing podcasts. And so they can stay up to date. They 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 really have the social media game down. They stay up on these fads. And so in some senses, they seem, it's all a facade, but they seem more valuable than the pastors who are in the trenches, who are actually shepherding people, putting their arms around people, wiping the tears away from people's eyes. You know, this, it, it's all a, a perception versus reality issue. And so podcasters often can, you know, be giving their hot takes and doing all these things and pastors don't do that. And often they can't because they're working so hard. Actually, I remember as an illustration of that, I remember one time I was at a service at Grace Community and somebody, often what John MacArthur would do on certain Sunday nights is he would have a question and answer time just to let the people ask different questions and see where they're at, what they're thinking through, how he could help them. And one gentleman, uh, asked a question one time, uh, how should Christians think of twilight? Now, twilight, if you don't know, maybe you don't know, twilight is apparently some fantasy uh, vampire novel or uh, trilogy or something like that. And I haven't read them, but the, the, uh, it's funny because MacArthur, when he heard that, he, he's like, what is twilight? He's like, what is that? Like that was, and the entire congregation just laughed at him because almost everybody knew what Twilight was except for him. Now he had no clue what Twilight was. And so the questioner was kind of taken aback, saying, like, well, it's a, it's a vampire. It's about a vampire love story or whatever. And MacArthur, it was just, oh man, I'm just, uh, it's humorous just looking back on that. MacArthur was just baffled as being like, what in the world? Why are we talking about this? And, and I can't even remember what advice he gave. I think he just said, well, you know, Really, Christians shouldn't have any interest in those kinds of things or whatever. Uh, it is fascinating because it just, you know, pointed out to me and I think to a lot of people that there are certain things that MacArthur was not interested in, and one of those was the cultural fads of what people are reading, stuff, whatever. Now, at the same time, I don't want to discount that you should be aware of what your people are working through and what they're doing. Okay, that's absolutely true. But there is, like we're talking about here. A difference because you can only devote so much of your time to all these different parts of life. And the part of life that really doesn't need as much time is what is culturally relevant. That's, that's really the issue. Uh, really, the, the places that need your time is the study of scripture, you know, pouring into your family, pouring into your church. Those are the issues, right? And so the issue, though, is that some people take that and say, oh, my pastor isn't relevant. He's not culturally relevant. He's not, you know, uh, talking on these issues. He's not preaching against abortion from the pulpit every week. He's not uh, preaching against the LGBT rallies every week or whatever. He's, uh, people get upset about that, but they, they shouldn't because the pastor's job is to administer the word of God. Um, yes, he should. There, there can be times to, to speak to an issue culturally. Absolutely. There can be uh, opportunities to do that. And I think sh the, the pastor should take opportunity to do that periodically. But realistically, what people need is they need the word of God in the context in which it was written, meaning that, you know, this is the plug for expository preaching. If there ever was one, we are following the pattern of the early church where the early church would read the letters. There would be explanations given about that. This, this is the mandate for, for the church is that we are we're discussing the Word of God, and yeah, we might not talk about every culturally relevant issue every week or anything like that, but the things that we are learning are going to impact our cultural existence. We're going to talk about how high and lofty and holy God is and what that should mean for our life, and that's going to give us meaning and sustenance and really a longevity living in this fallen world that trying to hit all these culturally rev relevant issues wouldn't. And so it's really important. Uh, pastors do have opinions on these cultural issues, believe it or not. You know, and I know there's a lot of pastors that listen to this. I know they're saying, hey, man, I have opinions. Of course you do. The issue is that sometimes we forget 
as a regular churchgoer that that's the case. And so don't get upset with your pastors for not being as politically involved or not talking about the cultural hot button topics of the day. If your pastor preaches the word, love that. That's the most important job. That's literally what's commanded in scripture. That is what is commanded. And so following that command is the most important thing. And it's far easier to actually make the mistake of just trying to stay culturally relevant and do all that. But notice that's a difference between podcasting and pastoring, is that podcasting, there's no biblical mandate to podcasters to preach the word, you know, in season, out of season. There's no mandate for that. That's, that's the church mandate. But then don't try to make your pastor fit into the podcaster mold. Uh, there's a there's a difference there, and a podcaster can often afford to stay up on the the issues, and and what a blessing that is. But at the same time, it's supplementary to the church. It's not a replacement for the church, and that's not the church's role. All right, number six, pastors want to help you work through issues, not find out after the fact that you've become convinced or convicted on an issue. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of times, I've seen this happen so many times, it's, it's really frustrating for me when I see people who come out of the blue, just out of nowhere, and they say, hey, I have come to this conviction in my life. I, I have arrived at this conviction after intensive study over the last, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of days, but weeks or even months, it's very rarely years. But, you know, this, this temporary time period of study, I have arrived at this conclusion uh, by listening to these podcasts, maybe I've read some books or whatever, and the pastor is completely blindsided on that. And it could be lots of things. It could be baptism, the Lord's Supper, eschatology, whatever. Now, here's, here's the problem with this, okay? Uh, and this is why I say it this way, is pastors want to help you. They don't want to just be blindsided. Uh, and listen, the pastor has been, been working so hard. And if a pastor is being faithful, he's out there in the trenches. He's uh, visiting the sick. He's taking care of those who are suffering, those who are who are just suffering through anxiety, loss of a loved one. Uh, these these individuals are dealing with sin issues. You know, the pastor is is working so hard. The elders are working so hard. And you know, just think of this scenario: you have a pastor who, you know, who who's working hard, visiting the sick, preparing to teach the congregation, maybe multiple times, right, uh, a week. And then he gets a message saying, hey, pastor, I'd love to get lunch. Can we get lunch sometime? Oh, sure. I, I want to serve you. Let's get lunch. And so Bill takes the pastor out to lunch. And then Bill uh, sits down and says, hey, pastor, I just want to let you know that I now believe this issue. And let me give you these reasons why. Boom. And he just like lays into him or whatever. Now, it's very rare. Uh, I, I would probably say... I've only known maybe one person in my entire life who would be able to just talk about anything, who, is, who literally had a photographic memory. He never forgot anything he ever studied. Uh, those kinds of people are very, very rare, very rare. And I'll just say, if I was ever in a situation like that, I would say to myself, listen, or I'd say to Bill, because Bill's taking me out to lunch or whatever, Bill, I can't even remember what I believe about those passages, okay? Uh, you, you, you're talking to me about this issue, but I haven't had a chance to look at this since I was in seminary, you know? And so, listen, it's not really fair, right? Because you've had somebody who's been studying an issue for, for three months, and then he, he blindsides a pastor with it saying, hey, I've been listening to these podcast issues. Uh, you know, th these people have had a series on this podcast. I know I didn't tell you I was listening to it, and you haven't listened to it, but it really makes me have a confidence in this, in, in this viewpoint. And so now... I'm going to throw it out there and you don't have a good response because you're not prepared. And so that makes me more confident in my viewpoint because you didn't have any way to respond to that. That's not very fair, is it? I mean, realistically, uh, it's, it's kind of laughable if it wasn't so sad and if it wasn't happening all the time. And so that's one of the dangers of this. Now, it could happen. You know, this isn't limited to podcasting. It could happen with reading books. I, I acknowledge that. But it's a lot more prevalent now because of the access of information uh, through podcasts and, and the like. And so I, I just really want to admonish anybody who's in those kinds of scenarios to just be communicating about that. A lot of times when I, when I invite somebody to talk about something, I try to tell them what I'm going to talk to them about <laughs> because I don't want them to be like, you know, caught off guard saying, hey, I'd like to talk to you about this issue. 
just so that people know. And I appreciate when people tell me that saying, Hey, I want to talk about these issues. Uh, I've been working through these, I need your help, that kind of thing, just because I don't want to be useless to them. And I don't have a photographic memory. So, uh, or actually I think this, I heard somebody say this one time is yes, I did have a photographic memory, but it ran out of film years ago. So therefore it's at a loss now. So one of those things is that I, I think we, we need to have a realistic view of what's going on. Now, I would also say the second part of why that's dangerous is because, because when you, when you operate on, on those assumptions in that kind of scenario, there's really almost no walking back from that. It's kind of a, an arrogance or the human pride makes it almost impossible to walk back a public affirmation of something. So if you say, for example, you know, I just wanted to publicly say that I am a pedo Baptist now. Like I, I have fully embraced this issue and I just wanted to give you a chance to change my mind because I, I have heard all the arguments. Well, listen, um, you're at the, almost the end of your study, at least in your own mind. Right. And so you have come to embrace these issues fully uh, you haven't given your pastor any chance to combat that or to or to help you think through those issues or anything. But what you've done, in essence, then, is you've also essentially publicly identified the fact that you've spent time working on this issue. And therefore, if you change your mind now, you're going to show how bad of a student you've been over the last few months. So the point is, human pride will never let you walk that back. Uh, so my my advocate, my advocation... I don't know if that's a word, but it sounded right in my head. So the thing that I would advocate for, there, I'll just make it a verb, is that you ought to take years rather than days to make those kinds of decisions. Uh, okay, at least months instead of hours. You know, I think a lot of people think that they can solve a lot of issues over just over a couple weekends or something like that. But it actually requires a lot of careful thought analysis. It uh, it really blows my mind. I've seen, you know, if I can be honest here with regard to the eschatological debates that are going on a lot, it really does blow my mind. And I know I have people who are post-mill and on-mill who listen to this, but the thing that, that blows my mind, maybe this can be an encouragement, is when people abandon premillennialism for post-mill or on-mill and they never have read good premillennialists. It's just, it, you know, they, they quote like Tim LaHaye or, you know, uh, Left Behind or something like that. And they say, oh, I don't want that kind of premillennialism. That's the only premillennialism there is. I mean, realistically, I mean, come on, come on, guys. If you if you're, don't give yourself a chance to, to read the best arguments, you're just never going to, it's never going to be, you're never going to stand a chance. That, that's really the, the only issue is, is your pride has already taken over at that point and you don't give yourself a chance. Instead, set a prolonged time period. If you're trying to work through an issue, set a prolonged time period. Give yourself opportunities to read lots of issues. And I just, I just really think we've lost that in our, in our culture. We advocate moving so quickly. And I, I think it's just our social media. And maybe it even does relate to podcasting. You're just like, oh, just listen to this podcast. This will answer all your questions. Well, listen, I don't know what podcast could answer all the questions on any given issue, except for the Bible Sojourner. I'm just kidding. But one of the one of the things that I think we just totally forget is that we 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 as human beings require time to work through issues and to just ignore that. It's it's really irresponsible. And so that's one thing that I think pastors really would want their congregation to know is that let's work through these things together and let's go through some of the best sources there are on on either of these. Let's not just you know, try to try to somehow have a a meaningless conversation now that you've already made up your mind. Uh, that's that's not what we ought to be doing. So if if you are trying to make major decisions, really be involved uh, with your church leaders, the people who actually love you, who have a relationship with you. And that brings up the seventh thing that I think is really crucial here is that podcasters don't know you like your po- like your pastor does. Like podcasters may give you some information, but they, they don't even know you from Adam. It's, it's really kind of crazy. I mean, usually, I mean, maybe there are some exceptions to that. And I'm super grateful whenever I get a chance to meet people that I don't know from the podcast. And so if you're, if, you know, I genuinely, 
so just in case everyone anyone ever has an opportunity to say hi to me and they're just like oh i don't i don't want to you know annoy him it is literally never annoying to me whenever somebody comes up and says hey thank you for what you're doing the, you know i've been blessed in this way or whatever that's encouraging to me i want to be of service I, but i want to serve i don't want to replace your pastor or anything and the the issue is that i don't know you until until you actually introduce yourself and for a lot of i mean for a lot of pa- podcasters that's the exact same but but here's here's the issue is that as a podcaster or as a you know youtuber or whatever we're we're operating on the theoretical and so we're telling you what the bible says or we're trying to and we're trying to give application that way but pastors know the ins and outs of your life and so they're they're the ones who are tasked with shepherding you and so they they get to speak with with uh, with full knowledge for example i might uh you know you just think about i mean you could think about a lot of examples for this but i think of even as one of my mentors had said to me one at once upon a time is that you can be right and still be wrong and the context of that quote you can be right and still be wrong is that you might have the right theology but you can be wrong in how you apply it so just because you listen to a podcast and the podcast says this is what's right and you say oh yeah that's what's right and so boom i'm going to apply it this way you can actually be wrong in how you do that the timing could be wrong uh you know it's you know, I just think about, you know, somebody, somebody might even something very good. Let's say somebody was feeling a call to ministry, like they heard a podcast and they were, or they were listening to media personality, just talking about the need for, for preachers and missionaries. And this, this man said, you know what? I really want to be a missionary and I'm going to uproot my family and go to seminary and serve the Lord. That's really what I want to do. That is what the Lord's, you know, calling me to. And that's, I think, a good desire. And I think that that's a, a really great thing. But doing that without, you know, involvement of your church leaders, you know, just imagine that that individual having a conversation with, with a church leader and the church leader saying, you know, Bill, I'm picking on Bill today. You know, Bill, that is a great, a great desire. But your wife is going through chemotherapy right now. Now is not a good time to do that. Now you might say, oh, that's such a stupid example. Nobody would ever think. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised what people have done. And so the point being, I mean, that that's that's kind of an outlandish example, but I think you could actually see a lot of examples like that where somebody takes a good thing or they're convinced theologically on an issue, but they're applying it the wrong way. And so there is a there there's an important aspect where pastors really know people in ways that the podcaster doesn't or can't even. And that's why it's it's so crucial as those who are being shepherded to invite the pastors in. It would be kind of ridiculous if you just think of like the parent-child relationship. If a child just totally just rejected all parental authority and said, no, you can't, you can't have any authority over me. I don't want your input at all in my life. I'm going to make all my decisions myself. And he's a 12-year-old or something. He's like, okay, that's pretty ridiculous. That's not how it should be. And we know that intuitively, just in the way life works out, sometimes we don't do that as well as we ought to. So I just really want to emphasize that pastors know their people, podcasters don't. So that in and of itself should really be a a motivating factor to trust the pastors and to to give them a chance to really help you and make those decisions and apply theology. That brings us to the eighth and final thing that I think really ought to be stressed here. And really, if I could just leave you with one thing, it would be this. It's that podcasters don't give an account for your soul, but your pastor does. I just want to say that again. Podcasters don't give an account for your soul, but your pastor does. Uh, Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Can I just say that this should make all of us very grateful for our church leaders, you know, our, our elders and our pastors, those who, who watch over our souls, who, who take care of us. Yeah, you know, we should be thanking them daily for their sacrifice. I mean, they really do love us. A good pastor is hard to find, but if you find a good pastor who actually cares about your life, 
who cares about you, who who loves you. I mean, that is a gift. It really is. I mean, literally, Ephesians 4 calls it a gift to the church. It is a special gift that God's given. And so I just think we really need to understand that is a lot of times, and, and this is a cultural thing too, is we're trained, we're made sensitive to our areas of disagreement. And sometimes we emphasize those more and we say, ah, I wish my pastor did this, or I wish my pastor believed this, or I wish he you know, preached more on this and he did this. All. Okay. Yeah. We could go down those lists, by the way. I don't know if, uh, you know, I don't, I've never been to any church. I've been to some great ones and I think I'm in a great one right now. I've been to great churches and I have never, I repeat, never been to a church where I did not have disagreements with how the leadership did things. And I tell people that is that the more mature you get as a believer, the more knowledge you get, the more opportunities there are for disagreement because you'll, you'll realize, ah, I disagree on this fine point right here. Whereas when you're a new believer, you don't really understand all the nuances. So you're like, yeah, that sounds good to me. I don't really understand that there could even be a disagreement there. But the more you learn about things, you can disagree saying, ah, yes, I believe the adjective functions differently there. I believe the conjunction should be taken this way. You know, you, you have so many opportunities for disagreement. The more you learn, it's uh, really kind of incredible. Bookman's going to get upset with me for saying incredible there. Uh, one of the things that you need to understand is that this is this is reality. There's going to be disagreement. You, you don't have to always agree with your church leaders. And if you're in church leadership, you shouldn't expect everyone in your church to agree with you on that. But there's to be a harmony and a unity that's there that needs, it needs to be present. That's absolutely true. And I guess you could say it this way. If you think about, you know, the difference between podcaster and, and pastors, you might really benefit from a podcast. You might learn and grow. Uh, you might learn information. All that's true. But at the end of the day, the pastor is the one who's going to be there for your family if you die. The pastor is there who's going to hold your hand when you're sick at the hospital, right? And that should be sobering to us. And it really should promote a, a loyalty there and a love. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's a blind loyalty or anything like that, but, I, but it should be a real, a real vibrant loyalty there where you say, you know what? I recognize we disagree on some key things here, but I love you. And, and I hope that love is returned. And, and that's often what I think is heartbreaking to pastors is they'll have, they'll pour out their souls. This is probably the hardest thing for pastors from, from, uh, both my own experience as well as hearing what others have said is that you pour out your heart and soul to people and the people will say, nah, thanks, but no thanks. And they just turn their back on you. It's as if you didn't even exist. And so I just, I just would really advocate that this, this ought to be something that we recognize is that church leaders are the ones who are responsible for our souls. And if we're kind of making it hard for them to do their job, well, it's going to be something that you stand before the Lord and give an account for. And so that should be pretty sobering. All right, two last notes. I, I gave eight things that I think the pastor and would want his congregation to know about podcasts and just listening to general broader media. And I think we could talk about more items as well, but I really want to just make two notes. One would be for pastors, don't lose heart. Uh, I know this is this, it's so difficult and frustrating when a pastor's pouring in his soul uh, for a congregation. The congregation says, "Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I like this other pastor on this this YouTube channel here, um, so I'm just going to stay home and watch him." Or, "Yeah, I don't really like your interpretation of this passage. I think this other this other guy does it better, and so you know, he doesn't say it this way, but you're an idiot." You know that kind of thing. That's so discouraging, but. Let me just encourage the pastors who, who do listen to this and who labor faithfully in the Lord that your reward is from Christ. And so model that selflessness that Christ himself modeled and do the best you can. Now, on the other hand, those of you who are not pastors, who go to churches, uh, I know there are many of you. In fact, one of the interesting things about writing the baptism book uh, is you know, I wrote this book to help people think through the issue of reformed infant baptism, just because I had a lot of friends who were working through that issue and I wanted to be helpful. And one of the things that has come 
from that is I'll get messages from people sometimes who say, hey, I've been working through this issue. I actually go to a Reformed Pado Baptist church and I don't agree with it. How should I, how should I operate? I mean, I don't, I'm not Pado Baptist, but there's no other good church in the area. How in the world should I, and, and that, how should I operate and, and interact with the leadership? That's a difficult issue. Uh, you don't agree on some pretty significant doctrines, right? But the, the key component is you, you got to be in church. And so I think you should be in the best church that's available to you. Uh, and there's always a possibility of starting a church. I acknowledge that, but that's really hard. So that's always, you know, last, uh, last option, I think in many ways, but you got to be in church. You got to be in a good church. And so what I would just say, and I've been in churches where I don't agree on significant things, but what I would say is, is really just try to bend over backwards to show loyalty and love as much as possible, you know, be upfront, uh, which you know, in talking with many of you who who have been in situations like that, I appreciate how you have an open and honest communication with with your church leaders, and that's so crucial. Remember, we're we're basically just trying to avoid some of the cautions and warnings that I talked about in this episode. But you really just want to tell your church leaders, this is this is where I'm at, but but I love you and I want to be faithful. Let me know how I can serve you, um, because. You know, I I still know that you're in trust. You you've been entrusted with shepherding this church. God has given you that task and responsibility, and I want to I want to really help you. And so that requires love. It requires sacrifice. It requires being willing to bite your tongue when you have disagreement on certain issues. And I think that that shows real maturity when you're able to let everyone else talk about how awesome a sermon was. Or how awesome a theological concept is when you don't agree with it. And you say, you know what? This is in your mind that you're saying it. You say, you know what? I don't agree with that, but I'm so glad that I get to be around people that love God's word and that and that really want to be faithful to him. I mean, really, it, it, is, it is important to prioritize theological issues. And there may be a time where an issue is so important uh, and it's such a conviction that you just can't worship at a church like that, okay? I think there are issues that that do happen that way, absolutely. Uh, but, but I do think a lot of times we just really shortchange our ability to interact with people we disagree with. And there should be a maturity in in you as a believer where you're able to interact with people who disagree and not cause problems, not be the tightest three factious man where you're just causing divisions in the church, but that you're, you're a faithful brother, a faithful sister who, who just really supports the church. And everyone says, you know what? That person is dependable. They are trustworthy. They are faithful. What a good brother. What a good sister. And I think that that's what we want, right? Uh, there's going to be lots of disagreement in lots of churches. But I would say if you if you go to a church that you don't disagree with, if it's something that you can abide by, um, just be the be the most faithful brother, the most faithful sister that you can. And I think that that's going to be a crucial, crucial reality. And ultimately, we're going to stand before the Lord, and we're going to give an account for how we did. That's pretty sobering in and of itself. But hopefully, this episode kind of gives you a way to think through some of these things. I think it's really important to talk through, you know, just how are we using podcasts? Are we using them as a supplement to the church or as a replacement for the church? And most importantly, maybe I'd even say, go ahead and have a conversation with your pastor about these things. You know, just really ask him, say, hey, what do you think of me listening to this? What do you think of me listening to the Bible Sojourner? You know, what do you think about that? You know, and you know, I think those are great conversations to have. And Of course, I would always love to hear from you if you want to reach out to me and uh, use the contact form on my website, petergaiman.com. You can do that. I love hearing from people. I try to respond uh, to every message I get, but it's gotten really difficult with how many people have reached out. But Lord willing, um, I'll get to you eventually on a certain timetable. But it's it's just a, a privilege to try to assist churches in thinking through issues biblically and may the Lord use an episode like this to do just that. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you.